Welcome to our Word at Work Wednesday, live weekly broadcast. My name is Pastor Andrew Sidney Mutondoro, Senior Pastor of Oasis Christian Assembly with headquarters in Johannesburg, South Africa. I bring you uh, uh, today's live broadcast by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And uh, let's just pray as we want to hear what the Lord has prepared for us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word is building us up. I thank you for your Holy Spirit lives in us, guiding us, helping us to understand your word without delay, and helping us to do your word without delay as we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that our hearts and minds are open, ready to hear the word, and do the word without compromise, knowing fully well you are more interested in our success than it could ever be. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, today is part six of our series, Consider Your Ways. God wants everybody to have, everyone who's born again, to have impact in life, to do experts in life, to have, to have real success, not ordinary success, real success. And in that context, many people have put every born again believer in Jesus Christ has potential in your spiritual DNA to have an impact in this world. God expects you, because you believe in Jesus Christ, to have impact. You understand that? I mean, John 3, 16, one of our most popular uh, verses, the Bible says, makes clear, for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in his son, Jesus Christ, what, shall what? Shall not perish or be destroyed or be lost, but shall live everlasting eternal life. Eternal life is the life of God. It's a life of no failure. It's a life of success. So everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, has potential to be, to be a great success in this world. You're a leader. When you're born again, inside you is leadership potential, which will be developed as you are planted in the ministry, teaching the right sound doctrine to take you forward. So right now, in this part six of the series, consider your ways. We, 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 it's time for you to consider your ways so that you don't end up like a person who had potential and never produced results, but somebody who produces what's in this impact. And so in that context, we're just going to go to uh, Zion chapter 5 from verse 1. The prophet Isaiah is speaking. Says, Let me, as God's representative, sing of and for my greatly beloved God the Son, a tender song of my beloved concerning his vineyard, his chosen people. My greatly beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. Very important. My greatly beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. Next verse. Isaiah 5 verse 2. And he dug and trenched the ground, and he gathered out the stones from it, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and yielded out a wine press in it. And he looked for it to bring forth grapes, and brought forth wild grapes. See, wild grapes are not sweet. So they're supposed to produce sweet grapes. Wild grapes cannot be used. And this vine had been prepared with the choicest vine. The ground was prepared well. The sighting of the vineyard was correct altogether. But the results where well, did not meet expectations. They were the very opposite of expectations. A few years ago, I preached one of the most important messages that I've ever preached. In fact, every message I preach is important because it's from God. But one of the most classic, most important that I preached is a message entitled, I Produce Sweet Grapes. And I would encourage you to invest in that message from our online store, www.makersworldstore.com. Or if you have it already, go and re-listen to it. All right, because I'm not about to reproduce that, that uh, message here. But I'm preaching from the same verses, but a completely different revelation that the Lord wants us to have for now. Okay. And, uh, but just to pick out one, th one of the many things that we shared in the message, I produce switch grapes, is that the determining factor of whether grapes are going to be sweet or sour is the kind of light the grapes are exposed to at the ripening stage. If they're exposed to the right light, they'll produce sweet grapes. If they're exposed to the wrong light, they'll produce sour grapes. All right? So 
light. God is light. God's word is light. Light is solutions. Light is answers. And so it means that since God's word is light, it means that the word of God that you hear brings light to you. It makes you produce sweet grapes, sweetness, the right results, real results in your life. The opposite is true. If you get the wrong words, or you listen to the wrong doctrine, and get wrong information, or listen to the wrong voices, you get the wrong information, and instead of turning out right, you turn out wrong. Instead of being a success in life, you turn out a failure. When you're born again and believe in Jesus Christ, you're on course to be successful. You convert not to your potential to real results. You produce the results. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits. So the fruits you produce, if you listen to the, if you meditate on God's word, understand it, and do the word of God, definitely you produce the right results. So right now, time for you to consider your ways. What message are you listening to? What information are you consumed with? Very important. You see, the message that you hear is a big determining factor. You know, these are things you need to take care of. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Very important. You might have done things wrong or might have had some failures in your life. How do you respond to those failures? Your response is very important. Consider your ways. Also look at what made you end up in the position of failure in the first place. So let's go into reading now Isaiah chapter 5, verse 3. Um, I'm Bible classic. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, Emperor of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard, my people, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Next verse. What more could have been done for my vineyard and that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to bring forth grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? You understand? So, God, the word is coming clear. God wants to show us something. The people in the chosen vineyard, on the best location, prepared, ready to produce results. But they didn't produce the results. They produced failure. Instead of sweet grapes, they produced wild grapes. Sour grapes, which cannot be used. It cannot be used. So the expectation of the oh, that, oh, the expectations that God had for the vineyard were not met. So the so says, what more could have been done for my vineyard? What else have I not done in it? Well, for to bring forth fruit grapes. Why did it yield wild grapes? Brothers and sisters, take time right now. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Why are you not producing the results you're supposed to produce? Why are you at the place you are at right now? Why is there stagnation? Why is there failure? Why is there no progress? Or why have you reached a plateau of success? Why are you limited now? Why are you going to the next level? Let's continue. Isaiah 5, verse 5. And now I'll tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. See, God makes it clear there. See, there are consequences for our actions. And our actions are a direct result of the decisions we have made. And the decisions we have made are directly connected to the information that we have. Right? What access do you have? What information do you have access to? What friends do you have? You can have friends that give you the wrong information. What programs do you watch on TV or on the internet? What books are you reading? What are your sources of information? Whatever it is, if you have the wrong sources and the wrong information, you're going to have the wrong programming in your, in your mind, and you're going to make the wrong decisions, and you turn out right, even if you might be, it might seem that you're doing right at the moment. See, a lot of people that do crime, a lot of criminals, especially commercial crime, and end up living lavishly, and people saying the person is making it, is doing well, or she's doing well. When they get caught, and most will get caught, <laughs> what happens? They will end up in prison. But those who don't know, they might have thought that the person is being successful. 
You see, we have people who are the wrong models, who are making progress, who seem to be making progress. It is the wrong way. It will catch up with them. Wrong models. Wrong wrong models. Well, let's come back now to, to, to verse 5, Isaiah 5, verse 5. And now I'll tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. I'll take away its hedge. The removal of the hedge, what does it mean? Protection is gone. And it shall be eaten. Anything goes. And burned up. And I'll break down its wall. And it shall be trodden down by enemies. You see, this is very interesting. You see, if you open yourself to the wrong information, instead of information that comes from the light, which is God's word, you open yourself to attack. Right? It programs you wrong. You act wrong, produce wrong results. And there are consequences for our actions. You don't understand that. You find, you find, you find that this is, I'll take away its hedge. Now, it's not a curse. God is removing the protection because why? No, it's not a cruel God. You made choices, see, to take yourself out. You listen to voices that are inspired by Satan, which programmed your thinking to do Satan's will, okay? And you've done wrong decisions. The hedge is taken away. You see, this is very important. I was preaching at our central branch this past Sunday. One of the things I showed people clearly, God's desire is for you to get married as a virgin. Yes, that's correct. It's not popular these days, but that's the right thing. And I encourage you, if you're watching, praise the Lord. If you're a virgin, remain a virgin until you get married. That is God's way. If you're sexually active outside of marriage, stop it now. That is sin. That is fornication. You see? When you do Satan's will, you lose God's protection. So there the vineyard has produced wild grapes, sour grapes. Why? It got the wrong light instead of the right light. You understand? So the grapes didn't ripen to be sweet. So they can't be used. So God cannot use you if you are not in the, if you don't get the right word. Is this word? So the protection is gone. Next, say, same verse. Watch this. Because the hedge, the hedge is go, gone. So the hedge protects the field. It protects the vine. Right? Okay. So the hedge is gone. What happens? It shall be eaten. The course of actions. It shall be eaten. You find somebody who loses their virginity and starts sleeping with a person outside of marriage. They've just opened the doors to sleep with other people. You see? They start sleeping with one. Before you know it, they've got another one. And even in the dangers, with the dangers of HIV that are currently prevalent, you see, you, you, see, you, you open yourself to the dangers. Now, I'm not saying everyone's got HIV is because they're promiscuous. So no. no, 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 no. Some are innocent. You understand? Okay? But some are not. It becomes easy. See, they've listened to the information of Satan. He says, hang on. If you, if you sleep with a condom, you are protected. You can't get HIV. Well, all condom manufacturers say their condoms are 99.99% protect, protective. They're not 100%. How do you know you're not in the 0 0.01, which is not protected? Better do God's way. Do the right thing. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying people should not use condoms. If you are married and you are in a marriage relationship, you are free to use. But there should be no sexual activity outside of marriage. That's why you find somebody when they, when they, even in marriage, if somebody sleeps with one person in marriage, it's adulthood, it's easier to do it two, three, four times, or even more. Why? You got the wrong information. You acted on it, and the hedge was broken. There's no more protection. Bring the verse again. This is the verse again. As a Five, verse five. And now I tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it shall be eaten and burned up, and I will break down its wall, and it shall be trodden down by enemies. So you see, failure is guaranteed. That is supposed to amount to something in life, have impact, produce fruit, ends up as a failure 
absolutely useless. Consider your ways. Students, study. Christians, pray. Study God's word. Forgive one another. Forgive one another. When you, you know, there's some popular statements. You know, it's hard to forgive. It's not hard to forgive. It's just a decision. You forgive. Let it drop. Drop. Forgive. Someone says, to you, I'm sorry, I did it. What else do you want them to do? You want them to cry, oh, and keep on, and cry forever and ever. No. If you've done wrong, you must show remorse. Be open and honest. Confess and repent. Show remorse. Even in the court, when a judge is sentencing, someone's found guilty. The judge says, are there any mitigating circumstances in sentence? If the judge sees remorse, the judge will give a, less, a more lenient sentence. If the judge sees unrepentant positions, he will give a harsh sentence. Be remorseful. So if you've done wrong, confess and repent and be remorseful. Now, being remorseful is not moving around with a sad face and say, oh, I'm out. No, 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 no. It's in the heart. You show the outside. You, that has been wrong, forgive without delay. We don't forgive. You have grudges, you have anger, and you, it needs more energy, spiritually and physically, to, to remain angry, to, unfor to, to not forgive. You see? So you make yourself sick. And then there are some who have forgiven, but through some information that they get, they unforgive. They take out back their uh, forgiveness. I'm not forgiving you anymore. No, 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 no. Forgive. Make a decision. Bring verse again. So, Isaiah 5, verse 5. And now I'll tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I'll take away his hedge, and it shall be eaten and burned up, and I'll break down its wall, and it shall be trodden down by enemies. The enemies are going to win. Next verse. Isaiah 5, verse 6. And I'll lay it waste. It shall not be pruned or cultivated, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that, that there rain no rain upon it. There are consequences for your actions, my brothers and sisters. Yes, this is the Old Testament, but this principle it still works even today. When you don't do God's word, you open yourself to satanic and demonic attack. You give Satan the legal right to cause havoc in your life and you will lose to, even though you're not supposed to lose to Satan and his demons. We, we are more than conquerors, yes. But if you are living in sin and confess sin, confess the of your sins. You see, consider your ways. Do God's will. Do God's word. There will be no rain. No desert curse, no. <laughs> the consequence of your actions. The Holy Spirit is grieved when you live in sin. The Holy Spirit is grieved when you don't do God's will. The Holy Spirit is grieved when you don't do the word of God. So the, if you are born again and the Holy Spirit is inside you, you can no you can, can, can get a point whereby the voice of the Holy Spirit is no longer heard by you. But you hear the voice of Satan and demons. Next verse. Isaiah 5 verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Notice the explanation now. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is what? Is the house of Israel. Hallelujah. And the men of Judah, his pleasant planting, the plant of his delight, and he looked for justice, but behold, he saw oppression and bloodshed. He looked for righteousness, for uprightness and right standing with God. But behold, he heard a cry of oppression and distress. So what does it tell us here? The children of Israel, the men of Judah, they were supposed to what? To have great success. The finest house of Israel. The house of Israel is supposed to have impact. But it's not having impact anymore. What's going on? Let's go. Next verse. Isaiah 5, verse 8. Woe to those who join house to house and by violently expelling the poorer occupants 
enclose large acreage and join field to field until there is no place for others and you are made to dwell alone in the midst of the land. See, you cannot acquire wealth through the wrong winds and expect it to last. God is watching you. What is the progress you are showing? What is the source? How are you getting those things? Consider your ways. You can't be ripping off people, stealing from people, doing things that are against God's word altogether. And say, oh, it's a success, I'm a success. It is wrong. You might be a success in your eyes. You might be a success in Satan's eyes. You're not a success in God's eyes. You're only a success in God's eyes if you are doing his will and producing the results he's planned for you. You're only a success in God's, life, in God's, in God's eyes if you're doing God's will. The results that come out of doing God's will. Those, that's success. Real success. Verse 9, Isaiah 5, verse 9. In my Isaiah's ears, the Lord of what said, Of a truth, many houses shall be desolate. Even great and beautiful ones shall be without inhabitant. <laughs> Next verse, continue. Isaiah 5, verse 10. For 10 acres of vineyard shall yield only about 8 gallons, and 10 bushels of seed will produce but only one bushel. You see, the things that have been working for you and producing results and producing success in your eyes and success in people's eyes are together, right? Because they're not being done in line with God's will. They are, their results coming out as a result of what? Satanic and demonic works. People are producing so-called success through satanic and demonic activity. But God makes it clear in Isaiah 5, verse 10, hang on, consider your ways. A time is coming, and the time is now, as I speak to you right now. If you have been doing things that are outside of God's will, time to stop now, consider your ways. Why? Because the time is coming whereby that which used to work, no longer working. Ten acres of vineyard are producing only about eight gallons. Ten bushels of seed are producing only what? One bushel. Notice here. You put in 10 and only get out one. Means, meaning what? It's a loss. It's a loss. Consider your ways, is here this word. That if you don't change your ways, you are putting yourself in the loss department. In the failure department. Don't make your life a loss. When the business is making losses, there's no profit. It loses, it starts losing what it has, and sooner or later it will be bankrupt and non existent. Consider your ways. Next verse, Zephyr 5, verse 11. Who want those who rise early in the morning that they may pursue strong drink, who tarry late into the night till wine inflames them? <laughs> Consider your ways. Strong drink, alcohol. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Inflamed with wrong passions. Late into the night. Till wine inflames them. When you are inflamed with wine, you are now drunk. You can't think properly. Late into the night. You are a husband. You are a wife. What are you doing in a nightclub? It's not for you. Consider your ways. Nightclubs are not for Christians. You are born again. Oh, I don't drink. You might be in a nightclub and don't drink, but sooner or later you're going to fall to the temptations there. Late in the night. Saturday night. You go Sunday service. You go in services. What were you doing Saturday night? Where did you sleep Saturday night? God is watching you. Where? Consider your ways. Where did you sleep Friday night? Whatever night is, where did you sleep? Don't sleep in the wrong places. Consider your ways. Next verse. Isaiah 5, verse 12. They have lyre and harp, tambourine and flute, and wine at their feasts, partying. This is good, but they do not regard the deeds of the Lord. Neither do they consider the operation of his hands in mercy and in judgment. 
Because they're your ways. What is driving you? <laughs> Somebody is sitting seven. Oh, I go, I, I go climbing. I just go there for the music. Consider your ways. <laughs> they do not regard the deeds of the Lord. Neither do they consider the operations of his hands. What God is doing, God's agenda, they don't consider anymore. God's agenda is now secondary to their agendas. Your agendas no longer make God's business number one. Soul winning is God's number one business. Bringing souls to evangelizing, talking about Jesus, not being ashamed of the gospel, talking about Jesus, sharing about Jesus, getting people born again, winning souls, bringing them to church, following them up. Those who have started coming to church, following them up, visiting the sick, helping the poor, following up. Consider your ways. Those are things you're supposed to do. But they no longer consider the operations of his hands. In mercy and judgment, if you are in sin, God's mercy is available for you. Not condemnation. Confess and repent. That's all. Do it. Next verse. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Therefore, my people go into captivity to their enemies without knowing it. And because they have no knowledge of God, and their honorable men, their glory are famished, and their common people are parched with thirst. The people have gone into captivity. Satan and his demons are in control. They lose their enemies. They lose their enemies. Why? They've gone into captivity without knowing it. Why don't they know it? Because they have no knowledge of God. Hallelujah. They've ended up in failure because they have no knowledge of God. Consider your ways. How much knowledge of God do you have? We'll pick it up. Next week Wednesday, it will be super glorious. Hallelujah. If you've been listening to us on this broadcast right now, uh, I encourage you to get Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Repeat the words that are on your screen right now. And uh, I'll lead you to say these words, and you'll be born again. From today, Jesus is the Lord of my life. He died on the cross, was buried, and resurrected. He is in heaven, but lives in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. With those words, brothers and sisters, you are born again. I encourage you to, to go to church this coming Sunday, to a church that teaches sound doctrine of Jesus Christ. I encourage you to, 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 to go to the nearest Oasis Assembly Church to you. And if there isn't one near where you are, please get in touch with us. We can work on planting one close to where you are. Our contact details are on your screens right now. Our email address is on your screen. Our website details are on your screen. Together the online store uh, details are on your screen. And our telephone details as well. Please get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you how this broadcast has blessed you. And we are thankful to you um, for having been part of this broadcast. God bless you. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to join us this coming Sunday. I will be I will, you know, there will be great services throughout all of West Kingdom Assembly. And I personally will be preaching at our Santon branch, West Kingdom Assembly Santon branch, which is at number 348, Angus Crescent, um, Northlands Business Park, New Market Road in uh, North Riding, Johannesburg, South Africa, from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We're going to have a wonderful time. And I'd like to thank everybody for, for your blessings that you sent through to me on my birthday on the 5th of May. It was fantastic. Thank you so much. God bless all of you. And uh, I would encourage you to, to get in touch with us so we can, we can give you the clip so you can see because on my birthday, 5th of May, I had the great privilege and opportunity to, to be on set with Pastor Chris, Chris Eklome, my father and the Lord, and the month of Holy Community Service, where he gave us the title of the Word of the Month. May is a month of leadership. And I had the privilege to be on that set. You need to watch that clip and hear what God was saying. Awesome. Now, on, from the 24th to the 26th of May, 2019, Higher Dimensions Conference Harare will be taking place at the Seven Arts Theater. We're going to have a wonderful time. We're going to have a service on Friday evening, uh, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday morning. It will be a time that's beyond imagination. Jesus will be mighty glorified. He will be sent, he's at the center of all that we do. This is a conference not to be missed. Make arrangements to be there. Invite your brothers and sisters, your relatives and friends, and all your enemies 
to be there and make sure you are there too. Register for free on the year that you got on the banner. You can't miss this. It's going to be phenomenal. Hallelujah. And uh, I encourage you to partner with us financially. And uh, right now, you see on your screens the banking details on your screens right now. We encourage you to, to do your financial partnership uh, as per details on the screen. And uh, you are swaying on federal ground. Thank you for making the broadcast continue. Thank you for your financial partnership. You make things happen. You are swaying on federal ground and you reap bountifully out of it. You definitely will. Beyond imagination results of God's goodness. And now, let's share the grace as we close the service for today. And uh, look forward. Don't miss next week, uh, when it will Wednesday. It will be another level. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we will thank you for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit dwells and abides in us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And surely goodness and mercy are our portion all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you.